today we're going to create these cityscapes of Manarola, Italy. Before we get started, I thought it would be fun to try to introduce a weird activity. For today's weird activity, I'd like to invite you to find a few random objects in your house and try to balance them on your head. Here are a few objects you might use. Your water bottle, hand sanitizer, a house plant, dog food, your favorite book, crayons, your housemate's shoe, a toaster, toilet paper. Start with just one roll and see how many you can add. And a toothbrush. You are extra cool if you can balance it vertically. If you're a kid, please don't try to balance a toaster oven or a plant or anything breakable or fragile on your head. I think we're ready to get started. For today's project, we're going to need 11 by 14 inch multimedia paper or watercolor paper, a pencil and an eraser, either an ultra fine tip Sharpie or a dual tip Sharpie with an ultra fine tip on it. Crayons, colored pencils, a set of watercolor paint, a size one and size eight round brush, a one inch flat brush, a bowl of water. Tissue, paper towels, or toilet paper to help clean your brushes. I also recommend tape. You can find these materials in the links below. As you get ready to draw your image, I recommend doing a Google search for Manarola. Find several images that you like and want to look at while you're drawing your picture. I don't recommend trying to create a realistic rendering of the cityscape. Try instead for a general impression, like this Cezanne painting here, or this Van Gogh painting. Here's another great example of an abstracted cityscape. If you were going to get really abstract, your cityscape might look something like this. I'm showing you these images as a way to encourage you not to be too much of a perfectionist and not to get too lost in the details. Start by laying out the largest shapes in your image. So those flowers going across the bottom, I'm doing a little sketch of that. An easy way to do this is to make a squiggly line across the bottom of your page. Now I'm gonna add a line for the mountain I see in the background. I'm gonna draw a large circle near the center of my paper to represent the main area of the village. Now I'm going to draw the jetty and the lines that represent the water's edge. Here I'm lightly penciling in a few of the most basic shapes that I see on the lower left side of my picture. This part of the sketch is like the skeleton of the picture. It's the part that everything else is built on, so it's really important. Now that we have the basic shapes of our picture, let's practice drawing a couple simple houses. I'm gonna do this in kind of like a cube shape. So you can see a taller one and then a longer, shorter one. Your village can essentially be a cluster of these very simple cube-shaped houses. Let's zoom in here for a moment now. Here I'm starting to draw some very basic angular shapes to represent the cluster of houses. If you start to feel overwhelmed by all the details, just remember these two super simple images that we looked at earlier. If you're really struggling with this, just make a big messy cluster of squares and rectangles in the center of your picture and it'll look great. Once you have most of the details laid out in your picture, you can go back and start outlining everything with an ultra fine Sharpie. I recommend using an ultra fine Sharpie because it makes your picture really pop out and also, if we're sharing art over Zoom, it's a lot easier to see each other's art when it's outlined in Sharpie. The windows on the houses are easy enough to draw that I didn't bother doing them in pencil first. I just drew them directly in with a Sharpie. Once you're done outlining with the Sharpie, go back and gently erase your pencil marks. Now that our basic outline is finished, let's take a short break. It's time for some handstands. Oh, 
I'm not very good at handstands. Now we're gonna choose the colors we're gonna use in our picture using crayons and colored pencils. I like using the crayons because it resists the watercolors and it looks really cool. I'm gonna start layering on some colors with my crayons. I'll often use several different colors right on top of each other. I'm gonna zoom in on the houses again so you can see how I selected my colors. I chose yellows and pinks and very light tan and just little hints of green. You can see there are some grays in there as well. I'm using a combination of crayons and colored pencils. For the larger areas, I tend to use crayons because I like the way it looks when you paint over them with the watercolors. And then for the smaller areas, I'm using colored pencils. Don't shy away from layering different colors on top of each other. It's really fun to mix them. I'm having a lot of fun here mixing and layering different colors on the rocks and creating all the different shadows with darker colors and using little bits of blue and tan and dark gray and blending them all together. Now I'm going to switch images and get some inspiration from this sunset photo. I'm adding some shadows in around the lower parts of my houses and um, then I'm gonna go back and color in the windows. I notice the windows are, um, you look closely at them, they're black and dark green and some of the shutters are also an orange color. Don't worry if your image isn't as detailed as this. The main thing is to just have fun and let yourself get lost in your picture. I drew a very simple boat in my water and I'm coloring it in with white crayon so that when I go over the water with watercolors, that white crayon will resist the paint and it will pop out. And you don't have to do this step, but it's going to make it so your paper stays more flat when you get your paper wet and add the watercolor to it. So it's really nice to tape the edges down with masking tape. I'm going to give my village a really cool effect by taking some yellow watercolor and doing a light yellow wash right over my village. And I'm going to add some red in there too. Okay, this part's super fun. Now take the one inch flat brush and just add a very thin layer of water over your water. If you add too much, you can go back and dab it up. You don't want any puddles or anything like that. As you can see, I'm doing a lighter blue on the bottom and then I'm letting it fade into a darker blue at the top. Now I'm gonna take that one inch flat brush and I'm gonna do a layer of water over my flowers, really thin layer. And I'm gonna take a smaller brush and add some purple paint on top of it. If you get too much paint or water in any area, just use a tissue to dab it up. If you want to take a tiny bit of black and a tiny bit of brown watercolor and paint over your rocks, you can do that too. In order to ensure that I'm using a really light color, I'm going to take some of my black and put it in the lid of my watercolor tray. And then I'm going to add some water to it. The more water you add to it, the lighter it will get. I'm going to take just a little bit of green paint and paint over the green areas of my picture. This is how I recommend cleaning a brush. Take a tissue and pinch the brush in the tissue and gently windshield wipe it back and forth. Then dip it into the water, don't stir it, just dip it, and again pinch it and very gently windshield wipe it back and forth in that tissue. This will uh, keep your water cleaner and it'll also prevent you from uh, rinse and paint down the drain. When paint gets washed down the drain, it ends up in our oceans. So we really want to prevent that if possible. Now I'm taking a clean one inch flat brush and a clean bowl of water and I'm doing a really light layer of water over my sky. If there's any extra water puddling up, just dab it up with a tissue. But wait, please make sure your blue paint is dry before you do this step. If the blue is not dry, it'll bleed right into the sky. 
if you want to hurry things along, you could get a hair dryer and dry it that way. Now that my paper is wet, I'm going to add a thin layer of orange paint. And then I'm going to mix some red and a tiny bit of purple. If you want, you can use a hair dryer to speed up the drying process. Once your painting's dry, gently take off the masking tape and then you're done. Yay! Thanks for joining us today. You can support this work by subscribing to this channel and also clicking on the little bell icon below so you'll get notifications when new videos come out. I also teach super fun live online art workshops to kids and adults. And you can find out more about that if you go to my website, rainbowparrotart.com.